My name is Josh Carabin, <laughs> and I am 28 years old. Three years ago, on August 18th, um, I received a phone call around noontime, one o'clock in the afternoon, just telling me to come to the hospital, um, that something was wrong, and I wasn't told anything. I was working at my desk, and I got a phone call, and I, and I saw that it was my brother calling us, Rick. And uh, so I picked up the phone, and I was excited. Um, any time any of them called, I'd be pretty excited. So I, I picked it up and I was like, hey, Ricky. And uh, you, know, you could tell, yeah, you could almost, you could, you could literally tell that something was really, 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 really wrong when, uh, when I heard his, his, uh, his reaction. He just, I still remember it clearly. He said, hey, Joshy. I was driving uh, home from Bible camp on the highway and uh, my mom called. So I picked up the phone and it wasn't my mom, it was a nurse from the hospital saying, hi, is this Rick? Uh, we've got your brother here and he's been in a motorcycle accident and, and your parents would like you to come to the hospital uh, as soon as you can and, and uh, didn't, didn't, it sounded urgent but not crazy. Drove to the hospital and kind of was thinking the whole time that it wasn't going to be a big deal, but some something in me made me speed, <laughs> and I was, uh, I was just anxious, over anxious for what I thought was going on. Mom came down the hallway and gave me the news that he had gone to be with Jesus, and it was like the most gigantic rush of emotion I had ever experienced in my life. When I arrived at the hospital, I was met in the hallway by my youngest brother's girlfriend and I knew something was very wrong. And when I went into the room, um, I was there and my brother Rick was on the phone with my other brother Josh. And I knew instantly um, that my youngest brother had died in a motorcycle accident. And uh, I said, what's up? And he just said, I just got some, got some bad news for you. And uh, you know, and then, just told me, you know, really plain and simply said Johnny was in a bike accident and and he died. And then that was it. That was pretty much all the words we said. We cried on the phone for probably, I don't know, it's, uh, it could have, I don't know how long it was. It felt like an eternity that we cried for. But uh, that's what it was. And I we just cried and cried and then eventually said goodbye. And um, I just cried at my desk for a good hour until my wife showed up. She worked about a half hour away. To put it bluntly, it was a, a straight up, honest, what the hell was that all about? That would be a, uh, to be the biggest one I had, because I didn't, I didn't doubt my faith. I didn't doubt that he loved me. Um, and I knew that he had allowed it. Um, so, I guess it was just more of a simple, angry, what the heck are you doing? I still knew that God loved me and had a plan, but I was very sure that I didn't like it at that point. And my big questions were what what good can come of this that we couldn't have done some other way. And I, I remember sitting on the shore down there being surprised that that I was doing all right and I'm going to get through it and and I knew that God was closer or not closer as close as he had ever been and I had just started to realize it that that this is now what I was experiencing is the hope that Jesus offers, like not 
John, there was hope for Johnny because he was a believer and he was with Jesus, but there's also hope for me left here on earth. Um, you know, like hope for the everyday, hope to get you through. And I realized, you know, people with other problems, if it's not death, if it's sickness or it's um, troubles or, you know, people facing crazy life situations when everything's taken away, that there, there's hope. Tons of hope for people that are left here. Okay, for me, I had to answer this question of why bad things happen to good people several years ago. Um, and that I really realized that God is God and I am not, and that um, I had to really trust Him with that and with understanding who He says He is in His Word. Um, from being a God of justice and a God that is jealous for us and yet a God that is all loving and a God that is completely sovereign and knowing those things and relying on them um, to just bear the weight of this world and to bring it to its full completion and knowing that I'm not any better than anyone else and that God sees us all as equal um, before him really made me just understand and realize that the weight of what Jesus paid on the cross and the hope that I have in him when I do put all my trust in who he is and where he's taking me and my family and this journey that we're all on. As people, we tend to be so egocentric and you know, we think of our own world and God takes my brother, therefore God can't be, God and the things about him can't be true. So it's, it, I just find it's such a narrow view of the world and how God works. And I 100% believe that God has a big plan, way bigger than, than I am or even bigger than I can understand. And I know Johnny's part of that. And so my answer is kind of simple, that God is, as people say, painting on a canvas that is huge and all we see is just a little tiny picture or a little tiny portion of that. And it looks fairly plain and fairly simple up close, but if we could see it, see the plan as God sees it, then um, it's beautiful even though my little part sucks sometimes. I, just, I find it an annoying question. <laughs> so, not that annoyed that you asked it, but just in general. Um, I don't know, I, I think it, it just shows, I guess, a little bit of where society's at, just trying to pull from any situation to say God can't be real, but... Um, I don't really have a good rebuttal for it, other than it happened. You know, like my little brother on August 18th died. And then I experienced healing and am still experiencing healing. And, and, and I am still experiencing healing. And I am still experiencing a huge way, even more so than healing, good stuff that's coming because of Johnny dying. Um, when you meet Jesus, you get a whole new perspective on death. Uh, like, it sounds weird, but I tell people this all the time. Like Johnny's, it's really not. He's really not dead. Like I know his physical body died, but I, I am, I am as sure as my brother and sister are next to me. I'm gonna see him again. I, I'm going to see him again, and I'm going to talk to him, and he's with someone that I absolutely adore. I, I, the only thing I can come back to is, is how real Jesus has been for me through this whole thing. You know, I could, I could try and convince you with, uh, you know, an argument from the Bible or an argument from what other people have, have said, but really, at the end of it, it just has come down to my experience and. 
You really, you just can't, you can't take that from anyone. And I, I wouldn't lie to anyone, that's stupid. That doesn't make any sense. It's not gonna further anything. No. He's with someone that I, I, I love him. I adore Jesus and I, I can't, I can't wait to see him. And I can't wait to see Johnny. So I mean, yeah, anytime anyone ever brings up that argument, I just kind of roll my eyes and say, oh, look, dude, it's, it's real. This stuff's real. It's gotten me through to this point, and, and it will carry me through till, till I see the both of them face to face. Thanks.